Hi and welcome back. Envelope generators come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Today I'll discuss four categories and talk about their advantages and disadvantages. For this video I'll use my favorites, the Nano Quart, the Erica Sins Black DADSR, the Chaos Devices Sadar, and the ADAC 506. But I will mention alternatives for each category as well. If envelopes are new to you, make sure to watch these introduction videos first. And if you like to support my work or you want to get access to PDF sheets with hundreds of patch ideas I used in my videos, have a look at my Patreon. You can also support my channel through affiliate links in the video description. But now, let's dive right in. The four modules I use today all represent different approaches to envelope generators. They all have different strengths and weaknesses, so even though these are organized from affordable to more expensive, that doesn't mean each next envelope is more powerful, better or useful than the previous. The value really depends on what you want from an envelope generator and how you plan to use it. In fact, these really add functions and features to each other, which is why I own and use all four. In a big setup, you will probably end up with multiple different envelope generators, but which ones are best for you to use or start with might be hard to decide. So let's have a closer look. The first category is the most affordable and simple, a no-nonsense, hands-on quad modulator. For this, I use Quart, and it's the envelope I'd recommend the most as a first option, unless you understand and are sure about why you want any of the other categories. This module has four attack decay envelopes, with switches for the time range. Each envelope can be triggered with a trigger or gate, or you can set an envelope to loop mode, which turns it into an LFO that can create anything from saw through triangle to ramp shapes. When you're starting out, having four modulation sources has a lot of value. If you won't use all four envelopes, you will use them as LFOs or a clock source, for example. Here's an example with a dual oscillator voice. A sequencer is tuning both oscillators and triggering three envelopes with different settings. Two envelopes are mixed and modulating the filter, and the third is sent to a VCA and on to modulate the filter resonance. That VCA is opened with a fourth slow looping envelope, and a copy of the looping envelope is used to modulate the pulse width of one of the oscillators. Here's basically the same patch, only this time the third envelope is also used as a looping envelope and mixed in to modulate the filter. Simple attack decay envelopes with hands-on control will stay valuable, even if you add more advanced options to your setup. In many situations, you want to grab and tweak a set of simple envelopes without menus, options or complicated settings. So I'd say this isn't the type of module you will grow out of or don't need anymore after a while. Another example is the Quadra, which is the first envelope I ever bought and still use and enjoy this module every day in my performance case. I'd recommend it as well, but this module is no longer being made. IntelliGel replaced it with a more powerful, but also larger and a lot more expensive module, which isn't always a good trade-off. If I wouldn't have the Quadra, I'd use another Nano Quart here as well, because having direct access to a couple of attack decay envelopes is crucial for me in this setup. Here, the first three envelopes control filters in simple voices, and the fourth, the VCA over percussive section. Thank you. 
Let me know in the comments if I missed some obvious choices, but I think for the price and size this module doesn't have a lot of competition. The Tesseract Salem is very interesting though. It offers 6 attack decay channels, even with slew and some mixing options, in exchange for smaller knobs and a larger footprint. If compact quantity is less of a concern, you can look into dual envelopes. This one from Erica Sins adds CV control over the attack and decay stages. Or, if size doesn't matter, for about the same price, you can also get a quad full ADSR envelope from Rides in the Storm. If you want to know if CV inputs are important to you, make sure to watch this video with a lot of patch ideas later. I also made three videos using this great starter voice. You can have a look at the videos here if you'd like to learn more about that. The second category is a full ADSR envelope with CV control over all its stages. For this, I use the Erica Sins Black D ADSR. It's a full attack, decay, sustain, release envelope with CV inputs with attenuators for all four stages. A module like this is both very hands-on as well as a fun tool to explore in more complex patches. In general, I'd say full ADSR envelopes are very attractive if you plan to use your modular with a keyboard. Having the four stages with hands-on control and CV modulation really adds depth to longer sustained sounds. But this is also an interesting option if you're into drones, ambient or self-playing patches, as the full-featured envelope gives you more shapes and movement to explore, again especially with the modulation inputs for each stage. Here's an example in a synth voice with a wavetable oscillator with sub-octave output sent through a high and low pass filter. A keyboard is used to tune the oscillator and gate the ADSR envelope. That envelope is used to modulate the wave shape and the filter. An LFO is added modulating the filter as well, and a third copy of the envelope is used to modulate the frequency of the LFO. But now comes the fun part though. The keyboard gate is also used to advance a simple sequencer. And those voltages are used to modulate the sustain part of the ADSR. This creates a different hold value on each node press which has a lot of impact on the voice. With these types of envelopes, it's worth it to look for more and unique features that add to this idea of going beyond the basics. I love this module in particular because, as the name suggests, it offers a delay stage before the regular ADSR shape. This lets you create offset to other movement based on the same gate input. Here's another example with the same bass voice with keyboard. This time though, the delay stage of the envelope is used as well. Again, the envelope is modulating the wave shape and the frequency of an LFO modulating the filter. Two LFOs are modulating the attack and sustain stage of the envelope, creating subtle differences in shape. A second ADSR is added to open the filter. Because the first envelope is modulated and delayed, this adds a lot of movement to the sound. Again, the delay is great for drones as well. Here's the exact same patch, but this time a recorded joystick movement is used to gate the envelopes. There are quite some modules in a similar ballpark, although a delay stage is harder to find. The Nano Serra is an affordable option with CV control over the ADSR stages and adds very powerful attenuation and offset controls, but it lacks the delay stage and useful CV attenuators. The Instro Saez is another example, again without a delay, but with gate outputs for each of the stages as a fun bonus. I made two videos about envelope generators for beginners with this setup. You can find those here. The third category is a creative multi-purpose digital module, which offers a lot more than simple envelopes. 
For this, I use Zadar. It's too complex to explain in a few sentences, but in short, it offers four independent signal generators. Each can create a ton of unique shapes that range from regular attack decay or ADSR envelopes to complex shapes and experimental voltages. The shapes can be triggered or looped as LFOs, the shapes can be modulated and wave shaped, you can use CV inputs to modulate speed, level, wave shape, repeat number, playback direction and so on. I did a full video on this module if you'd like to learn more about it. In general though, this type of module can be a lot more than envelopes and are an absolute blast to work with simply because they offer so many options. I feel this really adds to the modular feeling and exploration in a compact package. If I need a simple envelope, it can do it. If I need a unique complex shapes, it can do it. If I want a very slow organic flowing modulator, it's right there. One of the biggest strengths of this type is the amount of fun it is to explore the options and have those options inspire your patches. This can also be a great choice as a first modulator. Here's an example with a sequenced stereo oscillator through a stereo filter and effect. One envelope is used as a simple looping sine LFO and modulating the shape of one side of the oscillator. A more complex semi-random voltage is used to modulate the shape of the other side. A plucky envelope is triggered by the sequencer and modulating the filter. Another slow waving shape is modulating the filter as well. And the clock speed of the reverb effect. To add more dynamics, a copy of the simple LFO shape is used to modulate the frequency of one envelope and the shape of another. So to be clear, all modulation in this patch is done by Sadar. Here's the exact same setup, only this time three of the envelopes are triggered and fired off once on each step. The sequence is very slow, but each node is shaped very dynamic, creating a nice soundscape. The downside of this type is that the compact multi-channel nature has trade-offs. Most modules in this category will have shared controls for multiple channels and you don't have CV control over everything at once. In my experience though, here the screen and very limited menu diving is absolutely worth it. But that's for you to decide, some people might not like it. This category comes in many different shapes and variations, all with unique features and options. The Clavis Quadigy is an interesting module that offers four seven stage envelopes with lots of clever control and options, but less crazy shapes. It's also worth it to look at some of the many ornament and crime iterations, or even remakes of the multiple instrument stages, which is a unique concept with more hands-on control. But the sheer number of available options and the shape morphing makes Sadar my favorite in this group. The final category is the function generator. This is a topic I want to dedicate a full video on soon because there's a lot more to say. But it's a fair category when you are considering to invest in an envelope because it can easily do that as well. The power of these modules though is that they are more than simple envelope generators. Most function generators allow you to process and slew signals as well, like sequences, gates, or even audio. There are many ways to explore self-triggering, self-patching, and so on. Here, my favorite is the ADAC 506. Again, this one is too complex to explain right now, but there is an older video where I cover its features in depth. In short, this is a quad function generator. Each can create attack decay or attack hold decay envelopes, looping signals, 
but you can also process signals through it and use it as a slew limiter, trigger delay, envelope follower, or even as a crude filter. There's CV control over the rise and fall, end of stage outputs, average outputs, and so on. What I really like about this one is that it has amplitude and offset controls for each generator, making it very easy to dial in the exact right amount of modulation. And of course, it's special power. This allows you to set a minimum and maximum value for both the rise and fall time, and the module randomly picks variations within those settings. This makes subtle organic dynamics very easy. Here's a simple voice with oscillator, filter and sequencer triggering an envelope modulating the filter. A second looping envelope is used to modulate the wave shape of the oscillator. Using the easy rise and fall time variations on both envelopes adds a lot of interesting dynamics to this voice. Here's the same bass patch, but this time a slow looping envelope is modulating the clock, as well as the minimum rise and the maximum fall time. Also, the end of rise of the first envelope is triggering the third, modulating the frequency of the oscillator, which creates weird overtones. However, these are also the kind of modules that require you to read the manual and have a feeling for the modular and signal flow. If you end up using a module like this as a simple clock or envelope generator all the time, you could have saved yourself some money and space. So I would feel these are a better choice for when your system has some basics. Unless, of course, you feel you know what a module like this has to offer, or you are into modular because you love exploring and discovering interesting signal flow from the start. In that case, a module like this can be a great first choice and will probably stick with you for life. There are many options and alternatives in the function generator category, from big to small. I have to mention the make noise math here, and if you want to dip your toes in first, the Depfa A1712 is a great choice for an affordable single channel function generator. The build-in randomization of the 506 is rather unique though. This is just my personal pick and not a complete list at all, so let me know about your favorites in the comments. If you'd like to learn more, have a look here, and as always, smash that like, subscribe and bell button if you want to see more modular content from me. But that's it for now, thanks for watching, and see you next time.